Would you buy a car from a bankrupt automaker? Steve Leisman has the results of a CNBC Wealth in America survey. And uh, Steve, Carl and I have been waiting for this. Yeah, we yeah, we're doing, a, we're doing an early release. As you know, we're going to do this Wednesday. Uh -huh. But we got these numbers last night. We're not done crunching all of the numbers, but we got this question out because it's so germane to the debate going on. It's the CNBCPortfolio.com Wealth in America report finding bankruptcy could be devastating for the big three auto companies. Here are the results. We asked, would you be willing or unwilling to buy a car from a company in bankruptcy? 52% of Americans say no. Or, sorry, that's, that's reverse. 52% uh, are unwilling. I, I, made that, uh, I made a mistake there. 37% would be willing. Oh, really? 11%. 52% are unwilling to buy a car from a, from a uh, company in bankruptcy. So the majority say majority, you would no, they not would be not. willing to do right. it. Right. Now, the survey appears to back up the claims of automakers that bankruptcy would severely cripple their businesses. In fact, the survey, 800 Americans, we did it from December 1st through the 3rd, found the concern runs deep in nearly every demographic group, whether by age, political affiliation, income, region of the country, you name it. More than half of every group we measured is either unwilling or unsure it would buy a car from an automaker in bankruptcy. Women among the most wary, 57 percent say they'd be unwilling to buy a car from an automaker in bankruptcy compared with 46 percent of men, interestingly enough. Southerners, more reluctant than those in the Midwest, and lower income Americans are the most concerned. 60 percent of those making less than 30000 a year say they are unwilling. Full results of the survey with correct full screens will be re released <laughs> on Wednesday. Wait a second, though. Does this, would it make a difference if the government was backstopping this in any way, if they were the ones who were saying, okay, your warranty is still good because we'll back it up? We, we could not get into that. We, 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 the question was all other things being equal, right. the price of the car, everything like that, would you be willing or unwilling? It was a simple sort of uh, uh, a broad yeah. question that we asked. We couldn't ask about government warranties. One more thing I just want to say. Senate Bank Committee Chairman Chris Dodd complained yesterday that the Fed had shunned an invitation to attend the hearing, but we hear the Fed was not actually formally invited. <laughs> and I know uh, uh, Secretary Snow here will tell me he could probably not remember a time when the Fed was invited to a meeting and never showed up. They show up at things they shouldn't show up at. Dodd also suggested the Fed could provide loans, but CNBC has learned the Fed is going to send a letter in response to a letter by Dodd, and that letter is going to explain why it can't loan to auto companies without adequate collateral to protect its balance sheet. The Fed takes securities as collateral. They can't take auto plants. I mean, how would you give a haircut to an auto plant? So all that stuff out there. If I could just ask John Snow, uh, uh, Secretary, th those uh, poll numbers seem to back up your Yeah, I think, your, your I think ab 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 absolutely. And it, it makes sense. It's just sort of common sense that you're not going to buy... Uh, uh, an expensive item from somebody who can't be that won't be there to service it and 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 uh, and, and uh, guarantee and, and and perform on the warranties. So it, it it's it's common sense. Um, it seems to me as you think about this, uh, nobody knows for sure what would happen if they went into 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 bankruptcy. But do you want to run the risks <laughs> that look pretty real here? It's always a balancing of risks, but the risks to me look very real, almost unthinkable. Yeah. that we would let the big three go down at a time like this when there's already so much downward yeah. pressure on jobs. So I think there's an emerging political consensus that something needs to be done, but it ought to be the bridge, Bob, you talked about, not the pier. I, I, I think the, the, the idea, obviously, uh, an extended bankruptcy, you're, you're in, in, in a limbo position for 90 days is the death wish. The, the question is, can you pull off an instantaneous infusion of cash from the government declaration of bankruptcy and that gives you some leverage uh, in terms of your negotiation with debt holders uh, with uh, uh, UAW with with uh, dealing with dealerships but you would have to have the whole thing of a piece and you know you announce it on a Thursday and you're reorganized on a Friday mm -hmm. but but uh, I declare bankruptcy I'm gonna work this out over the next 90 days doesn't work that'd be uh, the fastest bankruptcy in history uh, we know that. Let's hear from the head of the nation's largest auto dealers, our retailers, on what should be done. Joining us live from Fort Lauderdale is our friend Mike Jackson, the chairman and CEO of Auto Nation. Uh, Mike, the survey numbers certainly point to the argument you made uh, on this program it's what seems like months ago, and that is that uh, given the choice, why would you, why would you go with, with, uh, with a brand that you weren't sure was gonna, wasn't going to be around? Yes, and it's even more so resale value than the warranty or the parts. When a consumer spends $30,000 on average for an item, they are very much thinking about the residual value because what they ultimately pay is the difference between the purchase price and the resale price four to five years down the road. And, and consumers are pretty sophisticated. They know if the manufacturer is in bankruptcy, that's going to depress the ultimate resale value of that vehicle. And why take that contingent risk. Just go across the street and buy a different product where you're going to invest your $30,000. So. 
I completely agree with the study, and I think the number is somewhere between 50 and 80 percent from our research of those consumers who would walk across the street and buy from the manufacturer who's not in bankruptcy. So how much oversight uh, are the big three, the, 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 the gentleman who testified yesterday, is their willingness to accept oversight overdone too much? Would you be willing to accept more? How heavy a hand should the government have? I think the government should have a heavy hand. Anytime you go to the government, you should expect a heavy hand. And I think there's a lot of frustration, which the automotive CEOs are feeling, with how the financial bailout was dealt with. Namely, number, nobody had to come before Congress. They got the financial services, got the money, the bailout money, and they're sitting on it, and they're not lending it. And Congress is determined not to let that happen again. And I think they're right, and I think that's healthy. And I think you take this crisis, and it's a unique opportunity for these manufacturers to get their cost bases to an entirely different level than where it was. Everyone is assuming too high a volume for break-even. And the, this is an unprecedented chance uh, to get the break-even point down to 11, 12 million units a year. And I think that would be very healthy in the long term for the American manufacturers, as well as dealing with union issues, too many brands, too many dealers. And all of that can be dealt with outside of bankruptcy. Uh, are you more confident today uh, than you and you have been in the past that this that this money will be forthcoming? Yeah, I think it's going to be ugly over the next week, but uh, it is unthinkable to have a catastrophic meltdown of the American industrial might for it to be swept away because of the fiasco on Wall Street. Now, it may be a bridge loan just to the first quarter that they can deal with it more comprehensive or it may be something larger but I am convinced that something will be done in the form of a bridge loan but what really needs to be done and John talked about it earlier the crisis for our industry is really that the financial service sector has not normalized imagine we were in recessionary levels of 13 million five hundred thousand units a year through August and on September 15th from one day to the next, for every brand and every manufacturer's sales volume collapsed to depression levels of 10.5 million. This is unprecedented in the, in right. the history but, of the industry. Mike, we, and we what happened from, from one day to the next? But we hear that from a lot of different industries. And, and I'm not arguing that this is, this, this is not something that deserves attention and quite possibly money from the American people. But the American people say as... As a give back for the taxpayer money, what are you willing to give? Are you willing to close the number of dealerships that you have out there to make some concessions to? Oh, well, we've, you know, I've been calling for a rationalization of the domestic dealer network for over six years, and it absolutely needs to happen. And I'm not calling for a bailout or support for dealers across the country. Uh, the strong will survive, and the weak will be swept away by this toxic combination of depression sales level and, and the lack of credit for business. And it's going to be painful and unfortunate, but it does need to happen. Uh, Mike, on that note, we're going we're gonna to save some time and get into the jobs number in a few minutes. Good, good to see you. Uh, talk to you soon. Good Mike seeing Jackson, everyone this morning. Joining us from hey, Florida. Mike.